Howdy, folks, and welcome back to Studio 44. Phil Sherman here with another fantastic stadium extravaganza video for you. I've been digging, cutting right to things, so let's get right into it. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to go right into the Stadium Creator Hall of Fame. We have Archmage. He has given us the MLB 24 Harlem Field. It's in Harlem, New York. has an altitude of 49 feet. 1923 is the year it was built. Now, as much as the stadium looks fantastic, it breaks my heart because the anomaly version of the stadium that he made was so good. So we're going to have to take a peek right field first because that's where the anomalies were, and that's the part that I loved about the stadium. And it looks like he's got some old school buildings up here with the little stairs. All right, little balconies taking you up into this castle-like. No one ever told me the name of these things. What do you call these round, like, cap? Like, is it just a tower? I mean, obviously, it's just a little building, but... He's made all these custom decks. What is this green? Is the green another scoreboard? Yep. Oh, scoreboards bunched together. Okay. And, of course, he created all these balconies. Fantastic. And I really like the <laughs> the staircases. What's making the stair? Oh, okay, the little restaurant. Very nice. And then you got a different custom balcony over here. Oh, no, they're the same. I see what's going on now. All right. There's like three layers, and the bottom layer has has them like caged in. Very fun. He still managed to keep the sections, you know, section. That looks fun. All right. All right, but he has the lampposts serving as pillars. And then over here, he's got the trestle serving as pillars. Wouldn't it be nice if they just gave us a damn pillar? ATG Baseball. We are here for you. Very nice. Left field, I think, is pretty different. He's got these balconies up here. Fantastic. Using the newer batter's eye. Of course, there are, what, like one or two brand new ones in the contemporary update? You had to love that update, right, Arch? No, oh, it's an escalator. Okay. All right. Is that what takes you up into here? These, like, old-school luxury suites? Arch and his classical builds. Fantastic. Harlem Field. Man. This one's nice, but I, I still like the Anomaly one better. This one's nice. You know, I guess who needs anomalies? I need them. <laughs> so you guys will buy my Anomaly Free Is Not For Me t-shirt. Available now at the Studio 44 shop. Linked right to my YouTube channel. Is this one of the newer buildings? No, yep, 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 yep. The... I, I said contemporary earlier. I meant turn of the century. Update. Using that old school building for the copper style roof. Dig it. And then, of course, there's some city out in the background. Parking lots. Fantastic. It's deep out there and right. I like how enclosed it is. I'm a fan of good enclosed stadiums. 345 and right. Only 381 in center, though. 338 down the left field line, so that's pretty standard. Harlem Field. Excellent. And, of course, some of the newer buildings are lit up. Shadows of the flags on the field. Very, very nice indeed. Got people hanging out in this corner over here. That's cool. This corner was done very nicely. 
using that brick sign to carry over into the third baseline stands. Looks really good. Another masterpiece from our friend Arch. Keep sending them to me, Arch. I have one more of yours in the queue. Back-to-back -back Hall of Famers, folks. This is Murph075. It's Miracle Grow Field in Marysville, Ohio. Has an altitude of 5,279 feet. Built in 2024. And he says that he named the stadium after Scott's Miracle Grow after realizing how much ivy he used on the walls. Uh, and then he placed it in Marysville, Ohio, which I guess is the hometown of Scott's Miracle Grow. So let's pull back and take a look. Yeah, I see a lot of green hiding the waterfalls and... Oh, I like, <laughs> it looks like a bunch of hedges, like in a maze for like a little private seating section over here, a la, you know, the, the seating behind uh, Fenway Park, the home run wall there, the, the monster, the green monster, jeesh. Then there's a deck in the middle and a deck on top and a deck that goes all the way across, beautiful. And, of course, you got the fountain hidden by Ivy as well. Out-of-town scoreboard covering the signs. Haven't seen that one yet. I like it. And I like this walkway in front of the waterfall. Then you got a simulator. Edit. Then you got a similar deck situation on the other side of the waterfall. Another fountain next to the batter's eye. Excellent. Excellent. I mean, there's a reason he's a Hall of Famer, folks. Scott's Miracle Grow. Wouldn't it be nice to have some big ass letters? Mostly just for naming the stadiums, putting the name of the stadium someplace. There's that restaurant deck up there, bleacher section right behind the home run wall grassy area over here with some ballpark food popcorn ice cream soda is this a future one looks like it yeah right cherry lime vanilla ice cream van available cherry lime vanilla cream chocolate is that wait is that like sodas because underneath it says mint choco Sunday choco peanut butter. I'm not a big peanut butter guy in my ice cream. Vanilla hot dogs, corn dogs, port corn dogs are disgusting. <laughs> my parents gave us corn dogs one year, one day for dinner when we were kids, and they were the most disgusting things I've ever eaten. And there's that building again surrounding the stadium in Marysville, Ohio, Miracle Grow Field. Excellent as always, Murph. Flip that light switch on and see what we're looking at. Old school infield pattern. At least with the dirt. Parking lot surrounded the stadium. Medium sized city. Or is that small? Pretty sure it's medium. Either way, it looks fantastic. Thank you, sir. We have another stadium from RC4625. This is Harrison Big Board Park. NAV3, I'm guessing No Anomalies version 3. He told me in the notes that he added eight speed cameras around the stadium. It's extremely satisfying in Home Run Derby with the decks in left and the big board in right. Says it's named after Harrison Ford, paying homage to his birthday, which is on the 13th. He was born in 1942 in Chicago, and that's where the stadium is. Has an altitude of 713 feet. And built 1942. So you got the big wall on right with the big scoreboard. Going to be peppering balls off that like crazy. He's using the barrier again as the yellow line over the home run fence. Ooh, I like the little, little teeny tiny smaller one over here where you have some arches. Excellent. Covering the normal arches on the staircase. Ooh, I like this funky... Home run fence over here going straight back, but then jolting this way and that way and all over the place. Only 318 down that line. Center field. We have a pretty standard batter's eye, 400 feet. Mm, this is interesting. Okay. 
He's got that corner sticking out again on the reverse side of the Hall of Fame sign. Then he's got all these decks with little roofs coming off. Fun. It's right under the bridge, which is resting right on houses. Fantastic. Okay, and he's got a little uh, zigzag here forming with these guys. With the wall sticking out of the brick. All right. Hall of Fame corner in the corner. Hall of Fame circle in the corner. Two decks behind. And then home plate. Oh, you got a little bridge back here. And the MLB stage. Very nice. That Hollywood sign and shipping container decoration goes all the way around the building. Faced off behind home plate. Super nice. Fantastic indeed. Let's turn them lights on real quick. See what we're looking at in the dark. Excellent. RC4625, you've been busy, sir. Lots of good stuff coming out of you. Fantastic. Thank you, sir, for continuing to send stadiums my way. Ladies and gentlemen, another stadium creator legend here. We have McCarran Park from our good buddy Sandman Dan. The stadium is located in Brooklyn, New York, has an altitude of 2,600 feet, built in 2020. And the notes he gave me say that it's an actual park in Brooklyn, but not a baseball stadium. And he wanted to make a stadium with an open outfield look and have multiple decks. And, yeah, it looks pretty open. Oh, left field is fantastic. He loves using this wiffle ball field as a deck, and I love it. He always does such a good job with that. He's got Brooklyn Brew over here. Excellent. I like this deck jolting off with the escalator there. And then there's another escalator down here. I don't understand why sometimes my camera's so slow and then others so fast. Right now it's really fast. Excellent. Out here with all these concession stands, you got gate D. Perfect little structure for a gate. And then there's some Wrigley buildings out here with some stands. Welcome to Brooklyn. There's that building again. Another building with fans standing around. Center field concourse looks excellent. Multiple layers there. This gives me a Camden Yards vibe. There's gate E. Very nice. Couple buildings across the street. Very quirky dimensions. Using the new school roof. Excellent. Sandman Dan showing off another piece of art. Are these actually in the building or are these a reflection? Oh, they're actually in there. Nah, pretty cool. Very nice, Dan. Oh, it's going to look dim because of the roof. Yeah. So we got to get in here to take a look. Oh, I didn't realize it lit up from underneath, too. Excellent. Little Sewell camera work here. A little faster than Sewell, probably, right? Looking amazing, Dan. Amazing. Oh, and then he used that. I like that a lot. Using that structure to cover the bleachers. Gorgeous. Kind of skipped right over that last time I looked at right field. Very nice, Dan. Fantastic work as always, sir. 
Thank you very much, as always. I love showing off your work. So ballpark by the sea in Miami, Florida. This has an altitude of 455 feet, and it was built in the year 2007. And, man, is it right by the sea. Holy crap. <laughs> Thin little sidewalk separating the stadium, or is it uh, some kind of barrier, a wall, or a dam? Holy crap. By the sea, though, it's under the sea, practically. I like it. I mean, you don't have much of a choice but to hit water shots almost in this park. I like this weird little shaped deck in right center, right next to the batter's eye. Very unique. Got the smaller lights, then it curls around and behind the batter's eye. Then there's a little seating section out here. So far, the outfield kind of gives me a minor league park vibe, although once you get back here, you're thinking big leagues. Outstanding. Pretty much anywhere you hit a home run, <laughs> you're splashing. Very nice. Very fun. Then this has a little field level viewing area where you can check things out under the quirky home run fence here again with that where there's like a separation in the wall open closed open closed open cl it's like grover open closed open closed near bar i have to hear him again i tend to start doing yoda It's probably voiced by the same dude, right? Frank Oz? Is he Grover? Or was it Jim Henson? Excellent. 70%. Still a lot of memory to toy with on this one. Very nice. Sympathy for Mario. It, I mean, it's it's fairly simple, but it looks gorgeous. I like this triangle deck out here as well. Perfect little concession stand or restaurant out there. Giving you the Tiki Hut vibe. I like using the arches to kind of block off the concourse from the rest of the field. Old school style. Nowadays, they're pretty much all open, so you can kind of peek through. Very nice work. A little tiny scoreboard of the batter's eye. Keeping it simple. Sympathy for Mario. Thank you very much. I love it. Next up, we have a stadium I was looking for, I don't think last video, maybe the video before. TMX2Fat35 says he renamed the stadium at Music City Yards. It's in Nashville, Tennessee. has an altitude of 2,000 feet, and it was built in 2006. Uh, he renamed it and uploaded it, and this is what we're looking at. And I love right field. I love those big signs. Very nice. You got a custom bullpen back here with the deck right next to it. Excellent. Ooh, I like the bushes right behind home run fence. Right behind the home run fence. 315. People in here are going to be tempted to jump in the bushes and look for some balls. Pretty sure you can make it here. I doubt you can get up here, even with it only being 315. I mean, even if you put this right along the line, it can be hard to put them up here sometimes because it's so far back. But center field is cool with the concourse that goes, yep, a little bit underneath. And in front of the scoreboard and then around to left field where you have a bunch of stuff going on. Three home run decks with the big concourse where people are chilling out along the fence watching the games. Another bullpen. Excellent. I like this one a lot. This gives you a, a warehouse at Camden Yards vibe with a canopy coming out. Because I think they have that on Utah Street in the warehouse. There's like team stores and souvenir shops and stuff in there. Maybe some restaurants or food. I don't know. But I was watching Gaming Kitchen's stream on the 4th of July. And he was rebuilding Camden Yards because he wa I think he's redoing it without the deep home run fence in left field, right? 
what it looked like in 1991 or two when it opened. And he says they change the food out there a lot, and it's depressing because if I ever make it back there, I want to get that bacon on the stick again. It was so good. <sighs> Ooh, using the new school roof. Okay. Yeah, I like this one a lot. That's the thing I don't like the at all about the roof is that it just dims everything down. You can't get those good... Uh, Aerial shots. Welcome to Music City Arts. Lots of signs and scoreboards and laser ribbon everywhere. Very nice. Pretty standard around and behind. Home of the Stars. That's, that's a popular choice right now, right? Nashville getting an expansion team. Very nice TMX. Worth the wait. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another new creator to Studio 44. This is M. Dingy, and he sends us Wyatt Park in Lasona, New Hampshire. It has an altitude of 90 feet, built in 2024, and he says that this park provides a concourse first design. So looking more to satisfy the standing room only fans. Has plenty of open areas to watch the game. Enjoy the park's many unique dining options and standing room area options. Well, right field, right off the bat, you see that. This big, long concourse that stretches into foul territory with the restaurant covered up. Very nice. Is this... Is that how it always looks? Does it always have that white bottom like that? I thought it was all, all brick. I don't know. And then you got a little dining cart right here. Can you read these signs? Sure doesn't look like it, does it? Of course, it doesn't help when my camera work sucks. Get in there. Out of the way, people. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with the menus lately. Yeah, can't read any of that. Hit it here sign under the scoreboard. Excellent. Look at all the people chilling out in here. Standing room right next to the first baseline. Excellent. And you got the steakhouse. People are chilling out all over the place on there. And then some of the very limited seats look fantastic. And then right behind home plate again. You got the standing room only crowd with a few bleachers. And concessions built right in underneath the luxury plaza. Very nice. Yeah, it's like it's like you're at a festival or something, and then there's a game going on, too. We've got some dinosaurs walking around. Okay. Scaring the crap out of people trying to use the bathroom. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it's a good place for the bathroom if the dinosaur is going to make you shit yourself. <laughs> You can go right in and clean up. <laughs> oh, boy. Hot dogs. And then you got some fossils over here and over there. Very nice. Fun. I like the stadium. Catering to the standing room only crowd. Yeah, like I said, it just feels like like a giant festival. We normally have tents with, you know, knickknacks and crafts. Beautiful work. M. Dingy, welcome to Studio 44. The name doesn't ring a bell, right? You are new. Am I mistaken? And you got signs on the building across the way. Some people are hanging out there as well. Fun. I like it. One of the newer batter's eyes, too. Not sure. Maybe I've shown one or two of these. I don't know. I got to get into making some stadiums again. I want to use some of these new batter's eyes. All right. I'm Dingy. Thank you so much, man. Welcome to Studio 44. 
Sid 2071 is back in Studio 44 with BEP Plaza. Now, you have to tell me what the BEP is because you have BEP Plaza and BEP Field and BEP Mountain. So you got to let me know what all these BPs, BEP. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you have to let me know what all the BEP is for. Atlanta, Georgia is the location. 2,500 feet is the altitude, and 2022 is the year it was built. And the thing that jumped out at me was this right field, double layer decking concourse section with the one little step. I like that. You got the strikeout meter. Now, I hear someone keeps telling me that this isn't working. Is that correct? Like, if you're watching the game, the strikeouts don't show up. I don't know. There's a lot of things going on. I've been making all my franchises for the Ricky Davis League, and I noticed that when you're making a team now, if you go into the logo editor without saving the uniform changes that you made, they go back to the start. So if you make any changes, make sure you save your uniform and then go into the logo editor. Otherwise, all that work that you did is gone. Of course, <laughs> you guys have had this game since March, and now it's July. I'm sure you've already run into that if you are, in fact, a franchise creator. I like your use of the Western Meadow Supply building out here in right field with the hit it here sign, right center field. Man, you put it up there, that's a freaking poke. Excellent deck in right field. I don't think you're going to make them upper decks, but looks fantastic. Concessions all the way around and behind. And then you got another, oh, this is a great little corner, too, with all these different layers. And there's that building again. What's this? We got to come up with a name for this building. It's like the most popular building in the vault now. Most popular building in the tool. More concessions to stop here. A second deck. Another little brick concourse. Excellent use of, oh, we got an anomaly here. So this could probably, uh, I don't know, will this show up in the game? Because it leaks in front of the batter's eye. Oof. But again, Sid, you might just make your stadiums for a pure show. And if that's the case, anomalies are there for the using. Got a bunch of little buildings surrounding the stadium with trees in between looking nice. Got the Aqua Theater back there. Some big buildings. Very nice. What's going on behind the stadium? Let's get back there. That castle like structure, kind of hosting a deck that goes all the way around. And then you got the Futurist Gallery out here in center field. Excellent. Swing back behind home plate, and then we'll turn them lights on. My favorite infield, my favorite infield pattern. Great work, Sid. I really like this field. Another fantastic video so far. Stadiums are getting cleaner and cleaner, and more creative and. Just good in general. All right, Sid. Nice work. Ladies and gentlemen, Tiger Shark 600 is back in Studio 44. He sends me Lay's Park for you guys to see. This is in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee. Has an altitude of 554 feet. Built in 2024. I like the... I like the waterfalls behind the batter's eye. Very nice. Whoa. Nice and tight balconies over here. We got one, two, three, four levels coming off this building. Very nice. Laser ribbon on each one. Section of seating with maybe a bullpen back here. Very nice. Got some Wrigley Field buildings with bleachers on top and the arcade. Oh, a huge scoreboard. Kind of two of them placed right together. Excellent. There's that new prop, that new uh, wall, fence. 
Very nice. It works there. Bunch of flags looking great. Nice little deck out here and right. And then you got the Harrison and Company building with some statues and sculptures and the lighting. I like the lighting coming off that building. Very warehouse-esque in Baltimore. Tiger Sharp, where have you been, buddy? It's been a while. There's the games and that building again. What's it called? The wedge Apartment. Very nice Tiger Shark. Turning the lights on, looks fantastic. Is this a template? Doesn't look like one I recognize, but it gets deep in center field, doesn't it? Yeah, 447, holy hell. That's a bomb back there. Like old school Yankee Stadium style. All right, another fairly simple stadium, but it looks good. The right field is definitely my favorite. That build, big building and the statues and sculptures and lights coming off it. The scoreboard in center field is fantastic. Well, oh, I didn't notice the window coming off or the clock coming off the top of this building. Then you got some trees in the waterfall. Very nice indeed, sir. Nothing going on behind the stadium. All right. Tiger Shark, 600. It's been a while, buddy. Glad to have you back. Look forward to seeing more from you. Sluggish Moth 963 is back at it with University Field. This is a fictional college stadium set in the middle of a college town, complete with the quad across the street. City is called College Park, located in the United States. Altitude of 480 feet and built in 2018. Right field jumped out at me with the scoreboard providing the facing of this cool deck. And there's that new fence again. Now that works. That works big time with it being a college campus and having like a fence in front of the the seating very nice indeed is this the one i saw did did i see this from you on uh sewell 21's discord page yes i remember center field amazing very very nice indeed using the arches and the staircase using their arches as well with the clock right in center field and a little canopy here for people chilling out watching the game behind the batter's eye canopy awning. Green metal overhang. <laughs> Protecting people on the stairs. Excellent. Using the new stairs and the new fence. Amazing. Covered picnic tables over here. There's one bullpen. I'm guessing the other one's over here. Yes, it is. Hitting home runs into the bushes is going to be fun. Hitting balls onto the sidewalk is going to be fun. Is that the new, yep, the new slab? I wish they'd give us a wall that size. This section looks great as well. The little concession stand area. And then you got luxury seats right behind home plate. Oh, using the restaurant windows. Beautiful. And then there's more of a general seating area as well. This is this is the best college stadium I've seen so far. NCAA written right on the pole here for the lights. Fantastic. Wow. Look at this park over here too. Guess what it's time for, folks. Stadium of the Year candidate. I got to get that stamp. I got to get that animation set. And then you got these planners all over the place on each corner, it looks like. Yep. Yeah. Oh, up front, you got the animal. I forgot what this is. Tiger. 
Mm, tiger. <laughs> Another creative use of the steps leading up to an entrance to the general seating area. Do you, do you guys know Kung? Was it Kung Pao? Kung Pao Under the Fist? <laughs> It's by no means an Oscar-worthy movie, but I get such a kick out of it. What is his name? Bob? Is it? It's not Bob Odenkirk. It's another Odenkirk, right? I don't know if they're related. Who's the one from Better Call Saul and all those? Which Odenkirk is that? But the other one, he directed Nothing to Lose with Martin Lawrence and Tim Robbins. And he did the movie where you fight the cow. And I think it did so bad because they they overused that cow fight in the, the trailers. And I avoided it for years until finally a friend of mine who I hadn't seen in years came up and said, oh, my God, this movie's so funny. And it is. If you've never seen it, Kung Pao Under the Fist, it's – was it Steve Odenkirk? I don't know. I'll have to put it up in post. He takes an old movie, an old Kung Fu movie from, you know, back in the day from the 70s, and he reshoots it and, you know, finagles everything to make it look like he's in that movie. And it's just this ridiculous story with ridiculous over the top comedy, but it's so funny. And there's a scene where the main bad guy whose voice is literally like this Tiger, 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 Tiger. He's looking through. <laughs> He's looking through a page of animals, and he's birdie, 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 birdie. <laughs> oh, my God. My wife hates the movie, but me and my brother-in-law got a real big kick out of it. I haven't watched it in a while. Maybe I'll have to bust it out. So funny. Kung Pao, Under the Fist, if you haven't seen it. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. Very sluggish moth. I mean, what can I say about it? It's freaking gorgeous. Could not be cleaner. It's got great, cool levels. There's parts that are like perfectly symmetrical. It's very creative, and it's just amazing. Stadium of the Year candidate, and the best college stadium probably that I've seen. Thank you for sending it my way. So happy to showcase it for you right here in Studio 44. Did I turn the lights on? Better do that. Excellent. Yeah, some of those newer turn-of-the-century buildings light up very well, don't they? Let's set up our thumbnail, huh? There it is. Excellent. Pecos River Field from Texas Eggs 75 is next on our list. This stadium is located in Santa Fe, New Mexico, has an altitude of 4,195 feet, and it was built in 1993. No special notes, but we've got one of the newer batter's eyes, and left field is standing out, kind of leads right outside to this little neighborhood out here with some serious protection around it. My word, dinosaur-style gates out there. Or fences. Some of the newer buildings available. Making it look very nice. Oh, look at it all the way back here. Holy crap. Gorgeous. What do we got over here? Are these the horse? We have horses. I think this is the first stadium I've seen with horses in them. And they're just eating some grass out here. All right. Pretty standard double deck out and right that curls around into this awesome batter's eye and roofing seating, roof seating. Gorgeous. Old school roof. Going to be hitting home runs off that roof, I bet. Let's see what we got here. Oh, 352 down the line. Yeesh, maybe not. That's deep. What do we got in left? Two ninety nine. Oh yeah, you're breaking windows off these buildings with a two ninety nine. Maybe going over the windows and hitting some of these. The shipping containers. Interesting. Pecos River Field. Got some old school and new school buildings back here. 
Nyla's Diner. Reminds me of the episode of The Twilight Zone I just watched where this dude was in the Old West in like the 1800s and his family's trying to move out to California and they run into the desert and they're hungry and starving and dying of thirst and their son is sick and then he walks over this mountain and all of a sudden it's 1960, what, two, three? And he's like walks into this diner and they give him some penicillin and he gives it to his kid. When he goes back over the same mountain and back to the past. Got some stuff hanging out back here. Looks like he's looking through some different props. Outside of the stadium looks amazing as always. I mean, this back here looks amazing. And then he's got the drawbridge too. And the boardwalk plaza type situation back there. Skung! I did it. Stadium of the Year candidate. I love it. This is becoming a popular building in the tool, especially for as an entrance with the steps that are built right in. Actually, it looks like he might have... Did he add steps? Yeah, he added steps. Or no, it's two, it's two buildings. Yeah, it's two buildings. Okay. Either way, it looks amazing with this parking lot that rides along the sidewalk on both sides. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. And there's a boat back here. I don't see any canoes, Texas eggs. Where are the canoes? You got this big, beautiful water back here and not a single canoe in sight. Come on, man. No, the stadium just went to hell. Because there's water, but no canoes. Way to go, Texas eggs. You blew it! <laughs> That's one of my favorite you blew it's. Happy Gilmore. <laughs> when he gets his friend to ask Veronica Vaughn if um, he likes any of the students more than a friend. <laughs> Billy goes, you blew it! <laughs> Oh, let's turn them lights on. Excellent. Stadium outside is lit up. The village, the neighborhood. <sighs> Yawn. That lighthouse is lit up. Very, very nice indeed. Pecos River Field from Texas Ags. Beautiful work, sir. Thank you, as always. Next up, we have another creation from our buddy Jace Schiff, or Jace155. This is Intel Garden Park. It's brand new, and it plays really nice. It's in the United States. has an altitude of 3,750 feet, and it was built this year. And you can see the short porch over here in left, although it's pretty standard, 330 using the arches as a facing with the brick wall right behind him excellent he's got a fence back there what's making the fence is it more stands i know he likes to do that move oh nope it's a end cap it's a good move I said it a while ago. It seems like it's been a while, but if you find a nice long fence that's part of an end cap or another prop that you can use as a fence, I think it it takes up a lot less memory than doing fence, 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 fence. And I wish they'd give us just bigger versions of all the fencing props. An excellent. I like the short porch. It looks really cool with concession stands lining the concourse area with a huge scoreboard and left i still think you're going to be hitting that scoreboard right even though it's 330 a fun little courtyard behind the batter's eye with a concrete circle oh using the old school guy there to host the statues then you got the little sidewalk area in the middle of the grass excellent got some park benches 
Escalators will take you up to the bleacher section where there are more concessions and a deck atop of all that. Beautiful work in the corner here. Excellent. Using the anomalies. These still show up, right? These don't harm anything because you can't get these in the field either way, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, see, red right out. Then his standard gaming building behind. And then there's a smaller deck, maybe luxury seating, custom luxury seating. And then a top deck on top of that. Very Pittsburgh-ish. Hosts 33,000 people. Still got some room to play with, too. 96% left. I need to start doing that. Maybe two decks take up a lot less room than the third. He's so got lights all over the place. Jace Chiff or Jace155 has some brilliant stadiums. Every single one has been great. You got the Western Paper Mill back there. That looks like one of the newer buildings, correct? Very nice indeed. Got that long scoreboard facing off this wall, hosting the bleachers, and the Hall of Fame sign sticking out. Great work again. Oh, I didn't check out this corner. I like the different patterns going brick and then the tan brick, right? Because they're both brick. Oh, no, they call it tile. My bad. Again, the dinosaur walls. Keeping people out of the stadium looks really, really good. I mean, they substitute pretty well as gates, right? Oh, small gate wall. That's small. Looks <laughs> freaking ginormous. Jace Chiff. Wonderful, wonderful stadium as always, sir. Thank you for your contribution to Studio 44's latest Stadium Extravaganza video. Braves fan, 11 96 is back. And this time he's back with the Frying Pan version 2. It's in Mason, Macon, Ma Macon, Georgia. Altitude of 381 feet, built in 2024. And we'll start out in right field where we have a small bleacher section. Oh, I like it right here. Out kind of bends and turns into right field, and then that kind of gets cut off. It looks good. One of the newer batter's eyes. Excellent. Going to be hitting balls out of the stadium and into this river back here, or canal maybe, lined with a bunch of trees and hedges. Yeah, he's using the, the grass. I like it. Pretty standard around and behind. Curling over into left field. I always like this look too. And it works because if you're hugged up right against this wall, you can still see the whole stadium. Maybe a little bit of right or left field you're going to miss out, but it definitely works. There's a bunch of trees in front of signs and then more field level seating in left with the concourse above with the brew hoo hoo. Big scoreboard out in left center, some cherry blossom trees. Excellent. Braves fans, stadiums are always so clean. I like center field right next to the batter's eye. It looks excellent. I've been doing that a little bit too much, haven't I? Back and forth with my head around the microphone. It's like Jim Carrey and Ace Ventura when he's closing the door. <laughs> oh, boy. Got some speakers back here. Oh, I didn't even check this out back here. All right. Got some new fence. Uh-oh. <laughs> 
these people walked in here when the cement was wet and still. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Braves fan. I'm just busting your chops. Oh, shit. All these people are stuck back. Oh, boy. Oh, he's got out. He's, he's kicking his foot around. I like this. I didn't even realize this. This is very Pittsburgh-esque with the sidewalk along the river just outside the stadium. Very nice. Using the new using new stairs. Excellent, Braves fan. One of your best so far. I like it a lot. Great work. So happy to see so many stadiums coming out of you. Appreciate your sending them my way. We have ourselves another new creator to Studio 44. This is Joby Designs, and he sends us Gator Cove Arena. It's in New Orleans, Louisiana, has an altitude of 2,500 feet, built in 2024, and he says it's kind of inspired by the polo grounds, not the dimensions necessarily, but he wanted an old school yet modern vibe. Seats only about 20K. It's for a team he created called the Louisiana Gators in New Orleans. He says New Orleans is not a huge city, so he thinks that 20K is about the right amount. I guess it's 25K. And it's kind of like a reverse polo grounds where it's deep out here and left. Oh, this looks great. And he's using that brick building as pillars. Fantastic. And then he's using the polo grounds batter's eye with an old school scoreboard in the back. And then home run decks on top with different concessions on each one. Creole dugout makes sense here in Louisiana. Then you got Gator Alley out here in right field in the corner. 410. Holy crap. I like the use of the waterfall parallel to that home run fence that jolts straight back. And then more pillars. Excellent. Ballpark Eats being shaded by this. What is this thing called again? The stage. It's just the stage. As you walk up here, get in line, and then there's some tables and the uh, seat indicators. Excellent. And you got a wedge building in here. Not very standard around and behind. It looks very, very nice. Another little restaurant and concession stands and a balcony or and a concourse area right here. Fantastic. Then there's that dinosaur building covered in a bunch of greenery. The upper deck is where you have the broadcaster's booth and the official scorer's booth. I don't know why I always go in here now. I need to go in the new one. I need to go in a newer one. I don't think I've done that yet. Then you have a diner back here with more concession stands and a bathroom. Beautiful. All right, Joby Designs. He says, thank you in advance for... Oh, look at this. Surrounded by water. Excellent. Oh, and then you got this guy sticking out. Oh, is this supposed to be his tail? I love it. Ha! <laughs> Nice work. The outside of the stadium is faced off very nicely. Dude, I like this one too. Skong. Is that the right noise? Am I making a good noise? <laughs> Maybe I should find my own noise. Well, I will once I get the stamp. I got to have that stamp animation. I'll go through uh, Fiverr as soon as the paychecks come back in again. Dude, what an excellent first showing here in Studio 44. Oh, I like the clubhouse too, right behind home plate. Excellent. Then you got scoreboards down the first and third base lines. Well, I guess the first base. Yeah, it was against third base. Uh, both lines. Okay. A little scoreboard over here. I love it. It's symmetrical. It's very unique. 
It's clean. It's 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 fantastic. It's very I don't even know how to describe it. It's just overwhelming isn't the right word. It's just awe inducing. I don't know. But this building is under disrepair compared to this one. So good. Very nice Joby design. So glad you found Studio 44 and so glad you were willing to share your stadium. Thank you, sir. Can't wait to see more from you. The 15th stadium of this video comes to us from our good friend JDisc98. This is Liberty Mutual Field in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Has an altitude of 289 feet and it was built in the year 2024. And we're going to shoot over to right field because I like this building. This building can be fun with the stairs. You know, when you can find fun ways to incorporate the stairs. And he's got the grill underneath with burgers and fries. He's got the new school seating behind this big home run fence that is hosting a couple scoreboards. Very nice. You got that weird building. What do they call this? Oh, it's a college building. College art building. Then there's a waterfall in right center and a glove in left center using the Phillies batter's eye. Bleachers behind that batter's eye and also a very nice concourse. <sighs> Complete with a wiffle ball field and a fountain. Be fun to hit wiffle balls into that fountain from back here. And then you got another fountain slash waterfall back. Meow. The Cleveland Guardian scoreboard, excellent. All new school seating as the upper deck wraps around. Oh, that's good. That's fun. Nyla's Diner built right into the structure separating the upper decks here. Excellent. And center field, I keep calling the center field. Behind home plate, there is a pair of of scoreboards excellent people are chilling out on the roof of the smaller part of this building and you got a home run deck in the corner with a couple of concession stands built right in people are in line and it's lit up with this little guy right now very very nice J Disc 98. Concessions built into this home run deck as well. Dude is robbing home runs over this fence. Great work. Got the very new apartment building up here. Oh, I didn't realize there was like two little balconies here. All right. This balcony's got people hanging out. This one's got a full bleacher section on the other side of the pool there. I'll try to stay in the stadium because I know the lights are going to do their thing. Concourse and behind the home run fence and right looks fantastic, as does the left field. Beautiful. All the concession stands underneath looks great. Great stadium from J Disc 98. This is what, third or fourth stadium from you? Keep up the good work, sir, and keep sending them my way. All right, guys. <laughs> We're going to close things up with a stadium that Sewell created. I don't even know what to say about it. He just told me that it's based on a lot of my rants, I think. It's called 44th Street Sherman Grounds. I zoomed in because he told me not to look at it. He wanted live reactions recorded. I barely caught a glimpse of the thumbnail when I pulled it up. But it's called 44th Street Sherman Grounds. I don't think he streamed this stadium because he didn't want me to see it. 
It's an anomaly city located in the U.S., has an altitude of 44 feet, and it will be complete in the year 2044. So I'm going to back out of there and back up and see what we have. Barrel Stack Cafe. <laughs> okay, so he caught enough of that stream. Seriously, though, who, who, who uses these? <laughs> when when are you ever gonna why is it important enough to make that prop and then of course you got the crates along with it very nice the future upper deck the barrel stack cafe oh sewell canine corner so i was making fun of the dogs you can't even see the dogs they're like this big is there a dog in here <laughs> Because we wouldn't be able to see it. Blue Windows LLC. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very nice. Uh, it's it's mind-boggling to me that you can't put one in between another one. Can you even put it? Yep. You can put a green one there. WTF! <sighs> oh, then you got a nice little old school upper deck that hosts a nachos and hot dogs stand along with the snack shack. Buddy M's with the scoreboard above all that. Wiffle ball. Ooh, I like how I put the slide here. We are right into a trash pile. <laughs> oh, boy. And then you got the train back here looking great, using all the new turn-of-the-century buildings. And, of course, the art house that has that overhang. And then you got a whole little future city section. Man, talk about a little bit of everything. I, I, I kind of made fun of this in a video recently, too. I don't get why people leave airplanes suspended like that. I mean, they could be landing, I guess, but the first clue that they shouldn't be in the air is that the landing gear is down. But again, they could be landing or taking off. But it's going right through the arch. And then you got the games building that you can hear. I don't know if I got the sound up or not. You got UFOs and towers and modem buildings. Dude, I got my new modem when the internet guy came. Looks just like this freaking thing. <laughs> oh, you got smashed up buildings with monsters. Oh, Sewell, you know me so well. You know just what I like. Canoe Cove! <laughs> Oh, boy, yes. Look at all the canoes. And he built it where it's not parallel to the home run fence. I love it. And then here's where Studio 44 will be, huh? The new uh, host of Studio 44 with gorillas and bears. Is that for Mark's teams? He's been the gorillas before, and he's been now he's the grizzlies. I do like this new building. I like it as like a pillar. But I don't get the random... What does that say? Kid? Something LC? It actually looks really cool in here. The rock and mountain aspect of it. And I like how these rocks are holding up the bridge in Canoe Cove. And it's lit up. Oh my god. Look at this freaking ridiculous thing. Can I hit foul ball? Uh, actually, you can hit a home run that hooks around right into his gullet. Oh, my dear Lord. Look at this dude. <laughs> oh, boy. These are the worst, though. Come on. Looks pretty standard around and behind. Ugh. Excellent work, Sewell. Canine Corner. Where are the dogs? I don't see any dogs. Oh, there they are. Okay. See, they're so small, you don't notice them. 
But there they are, <laughs> all lined up. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> the barrels and crates are very well placed, so... <laughs> Uh, I like these steps, too, that take you into this building. Got the home run glove on top. He used my world's least favorite dirt pattern. I'm not a fan of the lighter dirt or this cut or the straight line in front of home plate no pattern in the grass oh Sewell I didn't even see this little guy oh and there's a flying guy over here see now he's flapping in wing his wings but he doesn't move a pterodactyl oh there's another one right now and a windmill okay Great work. What a great way to finish the stadium. What a great way to finish the video. Still don't think we've turned them lights on. There they go. I mean, this looks like it could be freaking a setup shot for... What's that Harrison Ford movie? Blade Runner. Right? Isn't that something right out of Blade Runner right there? I didn't realize that UFO lit up so much. I've had it in my own ballpark before, too. Great work, Sewell. I mean, there's really not... There's really some cool things in here. Canoe Cove is excellent. I love the idea of using this guy to hold the bridge up. Because they could easily, you know, make an artificial beam... And, oh, I didn't see the guy in the water either. Look at this dude. Half alligator, half whale, maybe? <laughs> oh, boy. Only one flashy canoe, though? Come on. These people got to step up their game. Great work, Sewell. Thanks, man. <laughs> I love it. And I loved all the stadium you guys sent me today. Thank you so much once again for contributing to Studio 44. If you want to contribute in another way, I have a new shop open connected to my YouTube page. You can find it uh, if you click on my channel and then scroll all the way to the right. It says store. You can find things like shirts, mugs, sweatshirts, mouse pads um just to test things out i ordered a shirt and this guy right here which is a studio 44 glazed cork coaster if you want to buy something cheap but yeah click on that link see if there's anything that interests you and uh it's yours it'll come right to your door if you have a stadium you want shown here in studio 44 take a peek at the description of this video or the YouTube channel or my Facebook page and you will find a link to a Google form that you can fill out to have a stadium showcased right here. Check out Respect the Pick. Check out Sewell's page, Stadium Center. He said he's going to start working on episode two pretty soon. Can't wait to see that. He did a fantastic job on the stadium. I'm sure he'll do a fantastic job on episode two of that. Thank you all once again for stopping by, and we'll catch you all very soon.